In this video, I am going to discuss about thermal contraction theory of Jeffreys. This, this is about mountain building process. So, he was a contractionist and this theory is based on mathematical reasoning. So, to explain this theory, he used many mathematical calculations. So, the forces involved, the orogenetic forces involved are derived from cooling and contraction of the earth and a decrease in the speed of rotation of the earth. And these gave the needed force for orogenesis. And he said that in this process, speed of rotation of the earth gave needed force. So, this, he says that around 1600 million ago, the speed of the, the speed of the earth rotation was just 0.84 hours to meet, to gain a one rotation. Whereas now at present, we, it, it takes around 24 hours to achieve one rotation of the earth. And mathematically calculated, he calculated that falling temperature of 400 degrees Celsius in 400 kilometer thick outer shell would shorten the diameter of the earth by 20 kilometers and circumference by 130 kilometers and surface area by 5 into 10 power of 16 centimeters squared. So, in all these diameters are reducing, that's what he says in his theory. So, he uses many, he used many calculations to explain about the speed of rotation as well as the fall in temperature also he calculated at different shells or the layers of the earth. Mechanism of the theory and cooling is effective up to 700 kilometers. 700 kilometers which is up to the upper mantle. So at the end at, until the upper mantle he says that an upper layer contracted more than the layer below. So the crust contracted more than the mantle. And core is not affected by cooling due to high temperature and core obstructs the contraction of layer about it above it because of the high temperature which is prevailing in the core. An outer shell of the crust is already cooled, couldn't fit with the layer just below it and, and collapses on the layer below it. So the outer layer is very it's cold and uh, because of this cooling it's contracting and because of this contraction it couldn't fit with the layer below that. And so it's collapsing on the layer below it. So the crust is collapsing on the mantle. And there is a region which is called a level of no strain. And it is an intermediate layer that is between the. So the upper crust is there. So upper crust is there. And inner core is there. So between this layer there is an intermediate layer. So this region is called level of no strain. And there are conditions of contractions are such that they must be enable that layer to fit to the interior by stretching horizontally. So that it, this layer is fitting well, very, very well with this inner core as well as the stretching is ta taking place in a certain way that it is fitting with the, the outer, outer crust as well as with the inner core due to the spreading and thinning out and this stretching is taking place horizontally. So in this diagram we can see this, this is the outer layer, outer layer is getting cooled. So this is the outer layer is cooling, in the beginning process the outer layer is getting cooled. So the temperature decreases at the rapid rate in outer layer. So this is becoming cold. So the radius is this much. So that when we see the radius of the earth, it's around 6370 kilometer. When we see the crust, it is around 200 kilometer, but it is the continental crust is around 200 kilometer. When we take oceanic crust, it will be much lesser than continental crust. The upper mantle is about 700 kilometers and the lower mantle is about uh, 200, 700 to 200, 900, 2900 kilometers. So when the contraction is taking place, in the, so this, this region got cooled, cooled. The, because of this cooling, it's contracted and the radius of this outer crust, so the crust has reduced, so the radius of the earth also is reduced. And after this cooling of this region, this region also, this region also is getting cooled, so the upper mantle also is getting cooled, but this region is less affected. So this region, the intermediate layer is acts as a level of no strain because this, so this region collapses. So this region is also thinning out, this region is collapsing and the, the continuous collapse, collapsing forces on all this leads to formation of mountains on the surface of the earth. That's what this theory says. And as this stretching and these forces, these continuous stretching forces 
make these crusts to break and fish break and fishes formation these fishes are filled slowly like this from below and this leads to continuous rise in the these fissures and the these pressures the horizontal pressures leads to continuous compression in this in horizontally these compressions will lead to formation of mountains that's what this theory says an upper layer collapses to fit with the lower layer and this results in the decrease in the radius of the earth and this causes horizontal compressive stress which leads to buckling and folding of the rocks of upper layer and this mountains are formed and rising height of the mountains that's because the continuous stretching horizontally leads to fissures and fractures of these rocks and these fissures are filled from below and height of mountains rise depending upon the forces as 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 long as the force is continuous so the mountain building process also is continuous the mountain wills the because the forces are horizontal forces because of the because of that the mountains are continuously rising so the height of the mountains rise period of mountain building depending upon the accumulated forces it can be a, a accumulated forces could be a compressive force and tensile force a mountain building occurs and if force is weak then it stops so he says that in this theory if accumulated force is more accumulated force is more mountain building will occur if accumulated force is less or weak then the mountain will mountain building will stop that's what he says so this process is not always active throughout the geological period and zones of mountain fill, mountain building folded mountains mountains are formed under weak and elastic zo rock zones black mountains are formed at where hard rocks are located due to faulting and fracturing so that's how he explains about both the folded mountains and the black mountains so folded mountains are formed at the weak elastic rock zones whereas black mountains are formed at the hard rock zones and direction of force so rocks below the oceanic crust are more affected by cooling so the oceanic crust rocks below the oceanic crust are more affected by cooling because the when we compare that so the continental crust radius is more whereas oceanic crust the radius of this oceanic crust is less so it it is much affected because of the cooling process so it is directed from oceanic crust to continents directions of mountain mountains due to direction of force from oceanic crust to continent mountain ranges are formed parallel to the oceanic areas so this can be uh, for example it can be seen in this rockies andes and all formed parallel to these oceanic areas so th these are some examples for this location of mountains and evaluation of this theory and this theory was evaluated on the basis of forces of force of contraction some scholars say that the force of cooling and contraction is not enough so the cooling and contraction cooling and force is not enough because of the cooling and contraction is not enough and cooling at different layers also is not ac acceptable he says that cooling of the earth at different shells but that is also not not acceptable by many scholars and impact of uh, speeding of the speed of rotation the speed of the rotation on the mountain building is not acceptable so the, how how the how the speed of the rotation if was uh, less and less the different difference in speed of rotation can impact on mountain building process so that was also not acceptable by many and according to this the theory there have to be a uniform distribution of continents so when we see that continent has to be uniformly distributed but but in reality when we see the continents it's not uniformly distributed there is an uneven distribution of crust and the uneven distribution of oceans and continents so this also was a uh, not was not agreed by many scholars and location of mountains this location of mountains has to be always parallel to the oceans according to this theory but when we see that himalayas but this can be acceptable when we see rockies andes and all they are located along parallel to the oceanic areas but when we see the himalayas and the alpine mountains they are not located uh, located parallel to the oceanic areas so that was not that was not agreed by me on all the parts of crust ex experience contraction so he says that all the parts of the crust experience contraction but the location of mountains near them happen uh, can be seen only near the margins of the continents ne only near the margins of the continents say this is the south america so only near the margins of the continents it can be seen but here in this theory he says that this low contraction and cooling 
took place throughout the continent but the location of mountains are seen only along the margins of the continents so and not everywhere so this theory was severely criticized by many so this is these are the many uh, 